Hello everyone, it's Mr. John from AK Dragonfish 3D and we are at my workbench. Okay, so the project here is I've been playing a lot of Long Dark recently and I haven't played in over a year and a half and I know some updates, namely fishing lure updates. So this is uh, one of a four part series where we are going to attempt to make the four lures in the Long Dark to specs and go from there, see if we can't catch any fish. Now, I understand in the long dark it's ice fishing, it's October, we don't have any ice yet. So, when we do test these, we'll go test them at the local water, it'll be like a cold, super cold fall, fall scenario, uh, which is most of the southern US right now, a cold water, but not ice. Uh, I will eventually test them in ice in January, October, January, February time frame when the ice is thick enough to go ice fishing. But for now, we've got our scrap, we've got some basic tools, we have our beautiful hunting knife, that, and we're going to attempt to make lure number one. All right, everyone, this is lure number one. It is a simple flat bladed lipless crankbait with some, with an improvised metal hook there and it looks like some cordage tying it to the metal blade and then a little metal tab at the top I'm under the impression that the hole in the middle is where the survivor in the long dark tied his line not a hundred percent sure but we're gonna try to replicate this as best we can using materials on the list and in the time zone we have so we are looking at the simple lure, which is a blade of lipless shiny minnow, minnow crankbait. We have workbench, we have one piece of scrap, and we have 30 minutes. Uh, in the picture, as noted, it does not show the line, the snap, or the single hook. I'm gonna assume there's a snap on that nose and or that divot, as previously stated. In future videos, we'll talk about the other, the revolver shell casing, the acorn shell casing, and the wire bundle fishing lure. Okay, so here we go. I've got some basic tools that I would find on any workbench. Uh, in the long dark, there's a lot of inconsequential stuff that I assume is there when we're playing the game, such as weird little pliers that are otherwise useless in a survival scenario. You always got a knife of some sort because you can't really play that game without a knife. The game is useless without a knife. So now we got this piece of scrap metal here. Okay, and as mentioned, we got some corded sinew. I'm not sponsored by Silver Creek Leather Company or anything. Artifice will sing you. Uh, either case, I tried to find braided equivalency earlier, and instead I talked to a local who said, go get you some artificial sinew. This has a, a tensile strength, um, essentially a line weight, if you will, of about 100. So we're gonna try this. We're gonna cut this up with our knife here. Best we can, probably I haven't used a big knife like this in a while. Normally I use my pocket knife, so for the sake of safety, we're gonna use my pocket knife. We're gonna use my everyday knife here and cut quite a bit of metal here, free of, without cutting my hand. I have 30 minutes to do this, so I need to move it first. So my idea here is to just wing it because it's supposed to be a simple fishing tool, right? That's a fancy, not a lot of, Time effort put into this simple shiny effective. Okay, and then we can just take this part, cut away from you. Knife safety, down and away. There we go. How are we going to make this look like that shape? Well, the great thing about the workbench in the long dark is every workbench has a table vise. So, my thought here is to get the general fish shape by folding this, and then we'll punch, and then we'll use the vise. So let's go to the vise. So we are going, going to bend this quite a bit in the vise in different shapes. So there is a shiny, bit to it. I've sliced myself because I am bleeding now. Huzzah. Now we've cut it to a more manageable leaf shape. Use the pliers to get a more 
rounded fish-like shape. And as they say in the game, do not try this at home. But you know what? I'm doing it for the sake of curiosity. So if I get hurt, it falls on me. It does not fall on the people who made the game. It falls on me for attempting to make a, what they call a simple fishing lure using a bit of scrap metal in 30 minutes. It's shiny. It's shiny, that's for sure. Round this little tip right here out. That seems to be, oh, it's more of a, it's got more of a shad look now. There's that. Now we go back to the workbench and punch some holes. It's still a little rough, but it's not supposed to be perfect, right? There, okay, there we go. There's our, the body. Now we come back over here to do all the other fun stuff to the lure. So, hammer and knife. We're probably gonna get the all, the all punch instead. So near the back end is where we put the hook. Back, we we'll put the hook and on the lure there is also a hole in the middle. I'm going to put it more, applying my fishing knowledge, I'm going to put it more up here and that's probably where we're going to put the line. Now, IRL or in game, I'm going to assume that the main character uses his, the back end of his knife. As you can see, I've already hurt myself, so we are not going to do that. We are going to punch a hole right there. Ah, it's a little low. It's a little low than where I wanted to put it. You can see where I wanted to put it. And then the hook's going to go there, the line's going to go there, and we'll drag, we'll drag like this to the water. You know what? I think we're going to cheat. And here's why. Here's why I say I have the luxury of liberty of cheating. Because in the real world, there's going to be an abundance of fishing stuff available to me. I live in Alaska. I don't live in northern Canada where crap is very scarce. I live in Fairbanks. There's lots of people with lots of fishing gear. Uh, just about every two to three people I know has some semblance of fishing gear. If you ever play the long dark in Fairbanks, Alaska, we have a lot more resources available to you. I'm gonna take a little creative liberty here. I'm already taking creative liberty here. And actually get a flipping hook. That way I don't really truly kill myself. So, I'm gonna dig through my hooks here. Now, the picture in question used a single hook. So I have a single hook here. Single hook here that we are going to use. Alternatively, I have one of these things. Now I've heard good stuff, I've heard bad stuff about how turning these things into a fishing hook. I will demonstrate. So cut that part. Cut it there like that. And then you essentially fold this in. Fold this like that. use your pliers, your Gerber, your Leatherman, whatever, to, see, it's a, it's aluminum. It's very thin aluminum. Uh, if anything, I'd have it as a, a hook that the fish would swallow, as opposed to a hook that the uh, fish would, would bite to. I would not, that's, that's just one, if I'm fishing small fish, like bluegill, crappie, I mean, I know crappie, some crappie can get pretty big. See, that just twisted right that half off. So, other elements, if you've got wire, use wire. If you've got stronger metal, such as a steel, steel cable, steel gauge, you can twist or braid it into a hook. But for the sake of modernity, we're gonna use a regular hook. Okay, we're gonna open the sinew now, artificial sinew. So in the long dark, we use gut cord. This is artificial gut cord. And we are going to take a piece of artificial gut cord and we're going to tie it 
tie the hook onto the artificial hook cord. Yeah, that's that's nice and strong. That's really strong. So my thought then would be, I'm not sure what not to use. My fishing brain is going nuts. Twist it so it's a little bit thinner. Gonna tie an improved quench knot here. Best I can without jabbing myself with this damn hook. Come on, hook, work with me here. I'm on the clock. And then we'll pull it back through the top loop. Like that. And then pull it tight best I can here. What I'm working with. And then tie in with my knife on the workbench. Like a soap. Not to catch the main line. There we go. Alright, there we go. Thinking, we just double clinch it right there. So once again, I'm gonna twist this line. I I probably pulled way too much, way too much line here. So why am I using sinew? So I'm using sinew because in the long dark, poor little Mackenzie, our little lone survivor guy, doesn't have access to generic rope. So if he needs rope for any project, he has to kill an animal, take the guts, dry the guts, like three or four days or so. Okay, and then he can make rope, fishing line, etc. out of the guts. Alternatively, you can also find fishing tackle in other places in the long dark, such as fishing camps, etc. I'm not 100% sure it would matter, to be honest, which way we tie the hook or how we tie the hook. Sinew has a really strong tensile strength, so I'm thinking we just do a slip and be done with it. Or... Just the variations, variation like this. Twist this around. Ow, oh, come on. Come on. Work with me here, bub. Just twist it around. The knot like that. And twist it back through a couple times this way. that. So that's the intent. So it swims through the water like essentially like this. And then we just tie this off. And it's got this it's got a waxy feeling to it, so I like it. I like working with this. This is really good. I'm not sure what other projects you could do with artificial sinew. I found it that Joanne's. Something along with that one. those lines. All nice and tight. Tie them with a knife. Take the knife along. There we go. Alright, and with four minutes to spare, we've done this in 26 minutes. From ugly piece of metal, little bit of blood, little bit of sinew, some things that weren't mentioned. Otherwise, there we go. Simple fishing lure from the long dark. We'll go ahead and rig it up, take it to the lake, see how it fishes. 